Hello there, and welcome. My name is Calliope, and I'm going to be administering your eye examination today. I hope by the time you leave this examination, you feel even just the littlest bit better. So we have a very special kind of eye examination for you today. We are going to be taking a look, of course, at the eye, but we're going to get a little in-depth with it. We're going to be testing the functionality of your rods and cones. We're going to be looking at your peripheral vision, as well as your blind spot. There is going to be quite a few different tests, and I'm also going to tell you a little bit about what we're looking at and the anatomy of some of these things as well. Does that sound okay to you? Wonderful. Would you mind if I just grab your name and date of birth real quick? Just to confirm, good, and is that your preferred name? How do you like to be addressed? Excellent, got that down. So for this examination, I'm just going to need to be touching you a little bit, primarily for our examination of the eye and the back of the eye. Is that okay with you? Do I have your permission to do that? Wonderful. Thank you. So let's go ahead and start by taking a little look at the anatomy of the eye and what I'm looking for. So this chart of the eye probably has a few things that you might be unfamiliar with. So I'd love to tell you a little bit about it. First, we have the pupil and the iris right here. So the iris is this dark orange, light red part. The pupil right here. We have the lens. We have the little ciliary muscles right here. This gray part is both the sclera which is that white part of the eye, the very tough part of the eye. And we also have the cornea, which is a translucent layer on the eye. It's on the front of the eye. It doesn't have any blood vessels, but it does have nerves. We can actually stimulate a corneal reflex by touching the cornea with a little bit of cotton, and it should make you blink. We have the sclera, and then we have a layer underneath. This pink layer is called the colroid, and this houses blood vessels. And then this yellow part is a couple of things. So we have the hyaloid channel from the lens all the way down here. Right here is the optic disc, and this is your optic nerve. We also have our blood vessels here, you can see. And this part of the yellow is the retina. And the retina is what contains your photoreceptors, or your rods and cones. We also have this little dip right here, and this is called the fovea. So right in this area is something called a macula. And you can't see it on here, but we do have it on the little fundus chart here. But the fovea is the central part of the macula. This gives you the sharpest vision, which is why when you're looking directly at something, that's very sharp, but the rest of your vision is not. It's much more dull. And this part only contains cones. 
Now the cones are your photoreceptors that work in bright to moderate light and they work in color, black and white. They're used for high acuity and fine detail. Whereas your rods work mostly at night and in dim light. However, they're not color sensitive. So that's why when it's dark out, you are seeing in a gray scale. They don't really work with color. So you're mostly seeing in black and white. So let's pivot to what I'm going to be looking at when I'm looking at your eye with the ophthalmoscope. So this is the ophthalmoscope. I have a light. I have a little pinhole that I look through. And when I'm looking through this lens here, this is what I'm going to be looking at. This is the fundus, the back of the eye. We have the blood vessels. We have the optic disc right here. So that's where your optic nerve is. It's kind of hard to tell on this drawing. This should be a much lighter color, but I have the little bit of yellow just to make that a little more obvious. And then right here, we have the fovea right in the middle, this darker color, and we have the macula, and this is this lighter color. So if you remember the fovea, which is this little part right here, that's what is right here. And then the macula surrounds that. This is everything that I'm going to be checking on, looking at the health of all these structures when I get up close and personal with the ophthalmoscope. So I'm going to start this examination by taking a little peek at the external eye. I'm going to get a little closer. by just inspecting the eyes, looking at the eyebrows and eyelashes, the distribution of the little hairs. I'm going to be looking at the sclera, that white part of the eye, very tough part of the eye. The little tear ducts right at the inner corners of the eye. And I'd like to take a look at the tissues of the eyelids as well. So I'm going to pull up on the eyelid and I want you to look down for me, right? I'm going to pull up, you look down. Good. Okay, and I'm going to pull down on the eyelid and I want you to look Right? Okay, I'm gonna pull down, you look up. Good. All right, that's nice and pink, not overly red or pale. And I'm gonna bring in a little light real quick. And I'm gonna use my ophthalmoscope for the light. However, we're not going to take a peek at the fundus just yet. So I'm going to have you stare just straight ahead for me. Okay, and on the other side. Good. Very good. And while I'm looking at the eyes. This is the swinging light test, but I want to make sure that the eyes are equal, round, and reactive to the light. Good. Okay, let's look at the other side. Once 
When's the last time that you've had an eye examination? Okay, not too long ago. Very good. And now we're going to take a little look at the fundus of the eye, the back of the eye. So I'm going to put my hand atop your head just to steady myself, and I'm going to be getting very close. I'm going to first kind of be at an angle and then come in, and we're going to take a look at everything going on behind the pupil, behind the iris, behind everything that we can see with our eyes. So I am going to start. Red light reflex. Let me get a bit of a. There we go. A little bit of a better view. Looking for the red light reflex. And then I'm going to get in real close here. So I am looking at a few different things here. Looking at the fovea. Macula, the optic disc, the blood vessels. Good. We can get it a little closer. Very good. Okay, let me go ahead and back off. And then we're going to look on the other side. Most of us probably don't know what the fovea is, but it's likely that you've heard of the macula before, more specifically in a condition called macular de degeneration, rather. <laughs> macular degeneration. And most people are aware. Isn't science wonderful? So, that looks like a very healthy bag of the eye. If you'll give me just a moment. There we go. And so, we are going to move on to testing the rods and cones. So we're primarily going to be testing the color vision, so that would be more focused on the cones. But we will bring a little bit of light into play as well, so we can look a little bit into those rods, okay? So let's talk about the rods and cones for a moment. These are the two kinds of photoreceptors that your eye uses. To see the world. So the rods, these are what the eye uses in low light or night conditions, and the cones are what see color. So there are about 120 million rods in the eye, and there are about 6 million cones. These are specialized neurons that send information to the brain about what it is that you're seeing. Now, the cones are used to see color, and they're used in the daylight. They're used in bright to moderate light. They're also used for fine detail. So, we had mentioned that the fovea had only contained cones. This is what it contains. 
while the other parts of the retina have both rods and cones. So there are three kinds of cones that we use. We have red, green, and blue cones, and these allow us to see everything in the visible light spectrum. Now, even though we only have those three colors, they can work together so that we can see other colors as well. But cones are very light sensitive. So if there is a dim object, it's actually easier to see out of the corner of your eye because remember that the fovea, the center part of your vision, contains only cones. And these are the ones that need to work in bright or moderate light. So then the rods working in the other parts of the eye, if you look at something and you look just to the side of it, it's going to appear more clearly than if you were looking at it head on. You can see this in the night sky, where if you're looking at a dim star, if you look just to the side of it, it's going to appear much brighter than if you were looking directly at it. So now that we have a little bit of a better idea of what we are looking for, what we're looking at, I am going to test you with the Ishihara plates. And we're going to be testing for dutan and protan type abnormalities. So we're going to look at some of these plates. You may have seen these before. I'm going to ask you what number or what picture is in the middle of the plate. And we'll see if there is any sort of issue with your color vision. So let's open this up. And I want you to tell me what you see in the middle of this picture right here. What number do you see in the middle of this picture? Good, this is a 12. And what about in this picture right here? What do you see in the middle of this picture? Between the browns, the greens, and the reds. Good, this is an 8. And what about this picture right here? What do you see here? This is a six. Good. And what about this picture? What do you see in the middle of this one? This is a 29. And what about this one? What do you see in the middle of this one? 57. Good. We're going to change the colors a little bit. What do you see in the middle of this one? It is a little difficult. This one is a 5. Good. And what about this one? What do you see here? 3. How about here? a 15. And here? Yes, this one's kind of difficult too. We have a 7 and a 1. What about here? 2. And this one? 9. Good. Let's move on to something a little different. What can you see in this picture? That's 
that's right, there shouldn't be anything in this picture. What about this one? Do you see anything here? No. And what about this one? What do you see here? Good. And what about this one? The reds, the olives, the blues. What do you see here? Okay, there's nothing there. We've got some new colors. What do you see here in this picture? We have a 26. And this one? 42. Here? 35. And this one? 96. And a last few. What do you see in this picture? <laughs> this looks like a couple of snakes. Yep. What about this one? Very good. There's nothing there. And what about here? Nothing. What about here? Very good. So now we're going to do a fun little test where I have a whole slew of different colored pencils and I am going to have you tell me what color they are. And we're not just going to do it right in front of you. No, no. We are also going to do it in the periphery, which is going to be probably quite a bit harder. And we're also going to do it in more of a dimmer light as well, so we can activate those rods a little bit. So, I'm just going to have you tell me what color you see, okay? What color is this? What color do you see here? Good. Orange. And what about this color? What is this color? Pink. And what about this color? Purple. And how about this one? You don't have to get too specific with it, but just stay general color group. So you could say this one is blue. You could say it's turquoise. This colored pencil says it is aqua green. And what about this color? What about this color? Yellow. Yes. Bright yellow. And what about this one? Technically not a color, right? White. It's all the light combined. And what about this color? Green. Very good. So let's make it a little more difficult. This time, I am going to ask you to tell me what color I'm holding up, but I want you to focus on my nose. I want you to focus on my nose and don't move your eyes from my nose, okay? This will be a little bit of a fun one. What color am I holding up? Yes, that's green. Good. What color am I holding up? Can you see it? Yes, this is orange. And what about this color? Can you see what color I'm holding up? Blue. 
blue. And what about this color? What color am I holding up? This is a brown. See, if I wasn't holding the colors, it is kind of difficult even for me to see what color it is. And what about this color? What is this color? Red. What about this color? What is this color right here? Purple. And what about this one? color can you see? Yellow. And last one. This one might be a touch tricky. Yes, this is black. Very good. Now, I'm going to turn the lights down a little bit. It takes a few moments for the eyes to adjust to the color change, so I'll give it a couple moments before we try again. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm just going to press a button. And it's going to get just a little bit darker in here. And wait. If you've ever noticed that you've come out of somewhere dark, like a theater, and then you come outside, it's very, very, very bright outside, right? That would be because primarily your rods are being engaged, and it takes a little bit of time for them to click off, and for the cones to activate instead. Does everything seem? Is it a little more clear? Okay, so now let's work with the dark a little bit. And I'm going to hold up a color. I want you to do your best to tell me what color it is. What color is this? It's purple. What about this color? Green. What's the color? It's red. What about this color? Blue. This one. It's brown. And what about this color? reflects quite a bit of light, so it might be a little easier. It's yellow. What about this color? Orange. Mm -hmm. What about this color? Black. This one? Yes, white. And what about this color? Very good. And let's do some peripheral testing. Just let me know what color you see, but I'm going to have you focus on my nose. So whatever color you see out of the corner of your eye. What color is this? Red. What color is this? Pink. And what color is this? Yellow. What about this? 
this color? Purple. Looks kind of blue to me. What about this color? Brown. And this color. It's orange. What about this color? Blue. This color. Yeah, it's kind of a... It's supposed to be pumpkin, but out of the corner of my eye, it almost looks kind of pink. But that is orange. And what about this color? Green, yes. And the darker colors are a lot harder than the lighter colors, the ones that reflect a lot more light, so that your eyes can pick up that light and then activate those cones. I'm going to turn back on the light. And things are a little bright, so I'm going to give you a minute to reacclimate. Very good. And then we're going to work on testing your peripheral vision and your blind spot as well. So the peripheral vision doesn't need us to pull out the old anatomy charts. But I would like to show you a little bit about the blind spot and why it is that we have a blind spot. So the reason that we have a blind spot is because when we're talking about the eye, and this is the retina where we see everything, where light is picked up and we get an image, there's this area right here that the optic nerve is in. So right here is not where we're going to be able to see anything. And we can see in the picture of the fundus here, there's just this small little spot right here. This is your blind spot. This is where the optic nerve exits the eye and goes to the brain so that your brain can interpret the signals that your eye is telling it. We're going to start with the finger wiggle test. And I just want you to tell me which fingers you see wiggling while you are focused on my nose. So, I'm just going to have you tell me which side is wiggling, okay? Just keep looking at my nose. Mm-hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. Yep. Good. Yep. Mm-hmm. Good. Good. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh-huh. Good. Yep. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. Yep. <laughs> Good. Mm-hmm. Yes. A couple of sneakies. Now I'm going to have you keep your eyes focused on my nose. And I'm going to be bringing my finger in. And I want you to tell me when you see it come in to your vision. Right? So, just let me know when you see my finger come into your vision. Good. Yep. Good. Uh-huh. Yep. Good. Good. Yep. 
Mm-hmm. Good. Good. Very good. And then I'm going to be grabbing a paper test. And we're going to do a couple different ways of testing your blind spot. So, in order to elicit that blind spot, we're going to have to do a couple of kind of strange tests. And your brain doesn't want you to know that you do have a blind spot. Your brain is very good at filling in the blanks, filling in pictures, and it's going to try to resist seeing that blind spot. So it might be a little difficult for us to get that to be induced. If it doesn't happen, that's fine. It's kind of a tricky process. That's why we're also going to try it a couple different ways. But if it does, let me know when that happens. So, I have a paper right here. And we have a plus sign, and we have a circle right here. And I am going to have you close one of your eyes. Let's close this one. So if you close this eye, this one's open, I want you to look at this symbol right here, okay? So while you're focusing on this, as I bring this paper in, at some point this dot should disappear. You shouldn't see it anymore because it comes into your blind spot. That's where you can't see it, as if it didn't exist at all. I am going to very slowly, very slowly, bring this in. I want you to keep focusing on this part right here. Okay? So if you could focus, I'm going to very slowly move this in. Okay? Just keep looking at that little symbol there. Okay? Let's try that one more time. Look at that little plus sign. Move this in. Good. Now we're going to try with the other side. So, since we're going to be looking at this one, I want you to close this eye and look with this eye. So if you could keep your eyes trained on that little circle right there. I'm going to bring this in very slowly. Good. Okay. And one more time. Keep your eyes focused on the circle there. can be a little hit or miss. So we're going to try another test as well. So I'm going to have you cover one eye. So I'll cover this one and I'll have you cover this one right here so that we're both covering that side. And I'm going to have you look at the tip of this pen. I'm going to bring it across your vision and I want you to let me know when it disappears for you. Okay? So just keep your, your eye covered there. I'm just going to very slowly bring this across. There should be a point where you can't see it anymore. Kind of does a little bit of a skip. Very slowly. <laughs> I can feel when my eye just does that little shift. 
Good. Then we're going to try the other side. So I'm going to have you cover this eye. I'm going to cover this eye. And just look at the tip of the pen. Tell me when it disappears. Okay, just tell me when you see it disappear. Tell me when you see it disappear. Okay. And that is testing for the blind spot. Kind of a tricky one. Excellent. So, that about covers all of our special eye tests today. Do you have any questions at all? Okay, very good. I'd like to thank you so much for joining me for these special eye tests. I really appreciate you being my little guinea pig. I hope you have a and a good rest of your night. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I create primarily medical alternative medicine slash pseudoscience and personal attention system.